Hey, so fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to our Pittsburgh Steelers news and rumors video here on a Wednesday. We, of course, have a question for you to start the show. Drop a like down below if you want the Steelers to make a trade before the trade deadline. If a trade deadline coming up next week, and there have been some rumors, which we'll talk about in terms of players who have been, you know, rumored to be in the mix to possibly be traded away or to the Pittsburgh Steelers. If you want them to make a move, though, go down below and give this video a thumbs up right now. Today's Steelers video is brought to you guys by our friends at BetQL. Go to chatsports.com forward slash SteelersQL. Use the discount code CHATSTEELERS for 25% off any of their subscription offerings. More information will be down below in the description box. All right, it's a Wednesday. We've had time to, of course, go through, as you've seen Megan do on the channel a couple of days ago, the whole USC Mike Tomlin nonsense, and it is truly nonsense. But it was a rumor we had to talk about, and now we have the rebuttal by head coach Mike Tomlin, who I think gave a pretty uh, clear response to the fact that he's not leaving the Pittsburgh. Steelers anytime soon. So, of course, there were multiple reports, and I think that these were, you know, I don't know, I'm not going to say these reports were totally phony. I think that Carson Palmer is, you know, well-connected in the college realms. We remember, we forget that he's very much a, a college quarterback in terms of being a quarterback coach for a lot of young college players. That doesn't mean he has, like, you know, full knowledge of the situation, but I'm not going to sit there and say this is a total lie. I'm sure there was something there, but Mike Tomlin's uh, recent press conference on Monday, I think, very much cleared things up and shows that Tomlin is not going to want to leave for a college job anytime soon. And really, as we'll talk about, college jobs are great for some people, but if you're already an NFL head coach and a veteran NFL head coach, going to college football is not something that I think a lot of people actually want to do. So let's just start right away with Mike Tomlin's quote uh, when it asked about the USC rumors. And he gets mad at the uh, you know pr uh, the uh, press asking this question, but it's like, this is the number one question the press we're going to ask, so I don't know why you're getting mad about it. But either way, here's the quote. Hey, guys, I don't have time for speculation. <coughs> Excuse me. That's a joke to me. I have one of the best jobs in all professional sports. Why would I have interest in coaching college football? And that will be the last time I address it. Never say never, but never. There isn't a booster with a big enough blank check. If anyone's asking Sean Payton, is anyone asking Sean Payton about that? Anybody asking Andy Reid about that? End quote. Now, what he says there in the middle is exactly right. Like, why would I have interest in a college, uh, uh, in coaching college football? College jobs aren't that fun. Like, there are obviously plenty of college co coaches like Nick Saban, like Dabo Sweeney, who very much enjoy their jobs. I'm not saying they don't enjoy their jobs. We can compare a college football coaching job to an NFL coaching job. Co coaching college football is like having two jobs. You have to coach, but you also have to go out and recruit. I mean, as soon as Nick Saban wins another national championship game, there was all of those reports every single year that he's our back out on the recruiting trail and he's in some sort of, you know, star freshman wide receiver's home or senior in high school wide receivers home like the next week like college football recruiting is absolutely brutal now not to say Mike Tomlin doesn't work in the offseason and he of course obviously does but he's not spending his time you know visiting the 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 grandmas of potential quarterbacks to come play for Alabama or visiting you know the brother of some left tackle to come play at Alabama that's what GMs are for that's what the NFL draft is for like he can meet with people and he does do his due diligence and he is still is working but the workload from a coach versus a uh, NFL coach versus a college coach is just significantly less so even though I'm not going to sit here and just be like oh Oh, USC rumors, that's just completely uh, ridiculous. Obviously, that won't happen. The fact that Tomlin's name was linked to a job like USC, kind of out of the blue, tells me there was something behind it. Like, this is not just some random, oh, what about Mike Tomlin and USC? Yes, let's create the rumor. Like, there's obviously something there, but I don't see Mike Tomlin leaving anytime soon. Although, and I'll finish with this, there have been plenty of times where coaches have said, I'm not going anywhere, and Nick Saban was very famously one of them, and then he ended up going somewhere else. So it's obviously not 100% guaranteed he's not going to leave, but I would be shocked. I don't think it's going to happen, and his rebuttal to the press on uh, Monday I think is a very clear indicator of that. So rest assured, Steeler, Mike Tomlin fan lovers, he's not going anywhere, and we all probably knew that right from the start. Okay, question down below, pink comment, are the Steelers a top five coaching job uh, in the NFL? I think if you think about it, not just from an NFL coaching standpoint, like the Steelers are probably a top five organization from ownership to pedigree to living in Pittsburgh. Like, it's got to be a top five coaching job in the NFL, in my opinion. If you agree, type Y down below for yes. Uh, if you disagree, type N down below for no. Now, obviously, another reason why Mike Tomlin's not going to leave the Steelers is that the resume is really good. Like, they're not, I don't think they're ever going to fire him. I think that he would have to have multiple bad seasons, which he hasn't had ever because he's never had a losing season, or he'd have to have, you know, pick, take, a, take a different job in the National Football League. And again, like, why would you go to, you know, Detroit versus the Steelers? Or why would you go to Jacksonville versus the Steelers? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. The guy has been absolutely incredible. 15 years the Steelers head coach, seven AFC North titles. He's won two Super Bowls. I know that the recent success for the Steelers have been a little bit of an issue 
issue, you know, ever since Patrick Mahomes has had his rise, and even, you know, the very end of Brady's career, the Steelers have been a little bit in terms of struggling to go ahead and get over that hump. You think back to the Jacksonville uh, game, the last time the Steelers had made a deep run in an AFC uh, playoff game, but there's just no way that uh, he's going to leave anytime soon. I mean, the resume is absolutely fantastic. And even the owner, Art Rooney, said recently that, you know, they they aren't letting him go anytime soon, too. Whenever he said this, we'll throw it up on the screen, I'm pleased to announce uh, we've extended Mike Thomas' contract through 2024. And so, again, if you, if you needed any more reason as to think as to why this is not going to happen, I think we have absolutely everything there. He would go on to say in his, in his quote as well here, I'll just throw, throw, throw this, this last part up, Mike is one of the most successful head coaches in the National Football League, and we are confident in his leadership to continue to lead our team as we work to win another championship. So, again... The whole point is to say the Tomlin era is not over in Pittsburgh. Yes, again, I'm, I, I do think there was probably something there, but it might have just been, hey, USC reached out to Mike Tomlin, and then Tomlin said no. And then that was still technically a rumor because they were linked together, technically, but he coming out and giving this emphatic not going to happen, I think, is a uh, is a very, very clear indicator of the fact that the Steelers are going to have their head coach in Mike Tomlin for as long as Mike Tomlin probably wants to be there, which can be a very long time because Mike Tomlin is uh, a very young head coach in terms of the rest in the National Football League. So I think we can put this all to bed, all the USC rumors to bed, hopefully, but if more pop up, we'll obviously cover it here on the channel. Before we get into some trade stuff, I want to give a quick shout out to uh, our friends at Ben. BetQL, and of course their bet spec computer model which scans over 350,000 unique bets to give you the best chance to win your bets every single week. I do five bets per week. I call my bets of the week, and I'm 20 and 13 on my bets because I use BetQL's uh, app and of course their website to give me my best options. They have their five-star bets of the week, their four-star bets, three-star bets, two-star bets, and all sorts of different information as to why you should bet this versus bet that. Definitely check them out, and of course use our, our link in our promo code chatsports.com forward slash Steelers QL to get started now, and the discount code of chat Steelers that payment to get 25% off any of their subscription offerings. So we'll be down below right now in the description box. Uh, I promised some trade stuff. Let's jump into the one name I think that really has been ch churning the past couple of days in terms of potential trade away from Pittsburgh, and that is Melvin Ingram. So Ian Rappaport has a whole write-up on, you know, what he's hearing in terms of the NFL trade deadline. He talks about uh, Andre Dillard at the Philadelphia Eagles, talks about Sean Watson, the Houston Texans, then a name that was thrown in there that we just kind of went, oh, who? Was Melvin Ingram of, of course, the Pittsburgh Steelers. He says that they have listened and engaged in calls, which means they're not just receiving calls, but engaging in calls means there's a little bit of dialogue uh, going back and forth. It's a little odd in terms of the need to get rid of Ingram. Like, I understand that he's not necessarily been uber productive this year, but he's also been playing a lot with the Watt and Highsmith battling both of their injuries, and so getting rid of him to me would be a little bit of a head-scratcher. Let's see what Ian Rappaport had to say about Melvin Ingram just the other day. Quote, so as pass rusher Melvin Ingram, longtime Charger veteran, landed in Pittsburgh this year and has yet to hit his stride. With inconsistent playing time, teams have, been, have begun calling the Steelers, potentially trading for Ingram, and it does appear the Steelers have listened and engaged. Due to the balance of just $1.075 million in base salary, the team paid $2.925 million in a signing bonus. Ingram is expensive. The Chiefs have been among those on the hunt around the league for a pass rusher, and they did host Ingram on a visit before he signed, end quote. So, again... I think if some team makes the proper offer, and I think this is true for basically any player who's been rumored to be in a trade, the right offer will get him out of there. Like, there wouldn't be a, a trade rumor if, uh, you know, he could not be bought for the right price. But at the same time, Pittsburgh is pretty slim or thin at the pass rush position, at the outside linebacker position, and with the injuries to Watt uh, and Highsmith over the past couple of, you know, over really the course of the, of the season, I know the guy's been in and out of the, of the lineup, I think that keeping Ingram is probably more to benefit the Pittsburgh Steelers. But, as I'll finish by saying this, if the right call came and the Chiefs are desperate, and the Chiefs are definitely desperate right now, I would definitely go ahead and make a move to get rid of, of Melvin Ingram in order to go ahead and get some more draft capital, as that is always a plus going into the season, which could be kind of a rebuilding season for the Steelers, depending on what happens uh, with Big Ben uh, and other positions of need. Drop a like if you guys want the Steelers to trade for Melvin Ingram. Are you guys for this idea of getting rid of Melvin Ingram, whether it's the Chiefs or somebody else? Give this video a thumbs up down below right now in the comments section. We'll talk about the Browns uh, potentially not having Baker Mayfield on Sunday here in just one second. But first, a shout-out to our friends at BetMGM. Go to chatsports.com forward slash Steelers MGM and a place you can sign up and get your bets in, deposited, and cashed out. You just go ahead and create a BetMGM account, deposit $10 into your account, bet the 10 bucks, and then they'll throw in a free year of BetQL, the service we talked about a little bit earlier in the video, within 24 hours of your wager settling. That whole link is down below me right now and down below uh, in the description box as well. Love BetMGM. I highly encourage you guys to jump in uh, and get free year of BetQL by just depositing 10 bucks and betting the 10 bucks. Not a bad deal. All right, finally here quickly, we'll mention the Steelers at Browns on Sunday. Obviously a big matchup, big game for the Pittsburgh Steelers trying to get uh, another win on the board. They're three and a half point 
uh, underdogs in this one, so they're plus three in terms of the spread. However, the new report is coming out that Baker Mayfield might not be able to play on Sunday. Now, head coach Kevin Stefanski was asked about this in his press conference yesterday, and he was noncommittal on saying if it's going to be Case Keenum or Baker Mayfield. You remember Baker Mayfield did not play in the Thursday night win just over well, almost a week ago, now six days because it's Wednesday right now, uh, against the Denver Broncos. It looked like they were fine without him, even though Baker is clearly better than Case Keenum. That's why they had paid Case Keenum a ton of money as their backup quarterback. But the fact that Baker is still very much iffy in terms of being able to play, I think bodes well for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, you want to beat the Browns at full strength, but no Baker, I think, gives the Steelers a chance to go ahead and get a big division win on the road and a chance to keep this uh, season, which has been you know, up and down, a little more downs than up afloat right now. You're looking up at the Ravens, looking up at the Bengals, and right now you're still looking up at the Browns. A win right here could help kickstart a little slew of wins, and that would go a long way in order to help out uh, the Steelers potentially being a wild card team, and I guess still trying to have a chance to win the division, although I think the chances of being a wild card team are a little higher than actually winning the division. So Baker, as of, you know, Wednesday morning here, is non-committal in terms of actually being able to play, dealing with that left shoulder sprain. We'll keep an eye on that, keep you updated on that, but it is, it's definitely a big blow uh, to, to the Browns and a big benefit to the Steelers if they play Case Keenum on Sunday. We'll finish by asking guys, who do you got? You got Pittsburgh or the Cleveland Browns on Sunday? Give me your uh, take down below. PIT for Pittsburgh or CLE for Cleveland. I think most of you guys are going to pick Pittsburgh though, right? Because we're all Steelers fans here. So give me your thoughts down below. All right, ultimate for today on our Pittsburgh Steelers news and rumor video. Had to talk about Mike Tomlin and USC, of course, here uh, on the channel. Make sure you guys are subscribed. If any crazy things happen, trades or Mike Tomlin does leave, which won't happen, but if it does, we'll cover it here on the channel. So ultimate for today on our Pittsburgh Steelers news and rumor video. I'm your host, Thomas Mott, signing off for the rest of your day.